Welcome back to this game of ours. How's it going? It is good to see you. Today we do session two of Urintide. So, joining us today are the Saturday players, of course. The Saturday players have recently uh, chosen a click on the Discord. I'm pretty excited about that. And uh, perhaps tonight we'll be able to dig a little deeper into what exactly is happening over at Solitude's Rest, and perhaps the rest of the town. In the meantime, if uh, you, I would want to make a couple administrative announcements. If you, at home, watching this, want to, wa uh, want to play this game of ours yourself, uh, there is indeed a Dropbox link that I will be posting in the Discord, so uh, all you have to do is either look on my about page on Twitch or type in exclamation point discord and you'll get that invite. Uh, and I'm more than happy to distribute it and get as much feedback as I can. So uh, there's also, uh, I wanna take a moment to shout out uh, a sort of sister production. Uh, see, I have a lot of theater friends and uh, cause you know, I'm a dramatic person, as you can probably tell. <laughs> and I, uh, there's a, a couple of uh, theater friends of mine that I think are doing something really interesting. And that would be uh, the makers of a podcast called Call of the Void. So Call of the Void, which I'm typing here in chat. It, you can search it at Spotify, Overcast, wherever you find your podcasts. And it is a fun, interesting, well-acted uh, cosmic horror that I think would be right up your alley if you enjoy this game of ours. So, yeah, hey, Jess, good to see you, good to see you, good to see you, Rhubarb. Um, super exciting. So let's go ahead and check in on our players and see what they're up to. I'll say hi to them. All right, let's quickly... Quickly undep in here. Da, 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 da. There we go. Now I can hear you. Hey, how's it going? Hey. Hello. Oh. Hello. Good to see you all. Good to see you all. I hope this Saturday evening is treating you well. Eh. I'm kidding. No. It's good. You're doing good. <laughs> you know I'm doing good. You live with me. You know I'm doing so good. Yeah. I'm not real yet. It's fine. <laughs> real you know what that's a mood that is absolutely a mood all right uh so without further ado i'm gonna go ahead and read a little bit of an intro here and then we'll work work some uh new players and it'll be fun it was a summer sunset in briarsvale and at that moment the town was beautifully alive children fishing near the northern bridges of the Clare Cook, the riverfront plazas and malls filled with the joys of a glossy capitalist hope where everything was convenient and nothing hurt. The Heritage Days Festival planning committee had set a picnic in Testament Park and Gardens, busily arguing over the criteria of excellence applied to roses. Teenagers roamed in giggling packs, showing off to yet other teenagers who seemed completely indifferent. In this moment, the town was the very picture of that rough, idyllic harmony that now only lives in quickly fading memory. But only if one did not look too closely and too far up. Observing from too many rooftops, the same figure Darting out of sight when spotted, a woman with a face like a whirlpool, a brown dress with a braided neckline, her hands melting into claws, and then into the rooftop itself, muttering quietly. The only permanent mark she left was that each house that she visited would always have a black envelope in the mailbox when she left. An invitation to a soiree unimaginable. 
We begin three days after uh, your, you've spotted this figure on the rooftops over at Dorothea's. You're back in school, trying to organize, trying to think, trying to process everything that's happened since Mr. Forsyth collapsed. You have a temporary substitute who, again, is taking roll call and wanting to get to know you. The substitute walks in and is a balding, somewhat portly man. Uh, he's got that kind of a friar's bowl cut kind of deal going on. And he goes over to the chalkboard and writes his name, Mr. Gladstone. Hello, class. How's it going? Yeah. No, it's good to see all of you. You're all really uh, just just right, bright and chipper. So I'm Mr. Gladstone. I'm going to be uh, the substitute teacher for your homeroom until we find a more permanent assignment. And, uh, yeah, wow. There's, there's, uh, there's a lot of you, isn't there? Okay, uh, let's go ahead and uh, start with you and points towards you, Karita. Uh, what's your name and... Uh, you know what, what? What do you like to do, just generally? Um, my name's Ronnie, and um, I don't, I don't know. Like, I like to read. Um, I like, I like science. I like uh, learning about uh, the nature. I like nature. Nature. I mean, you got. I mean, you got reading is fundamental, and nature. Those are two great, great combos. I mean. You got you got good old Thoreau, you got Emerson, and you're got you all gonna be reading about that in a couple of grades. The, the American Transcendentalist Movement. You're, you're gonna like it. All right, good, good. All right, how about how about you over there? Points to you, Tori. I'm Dorothea Allen Park, but just call me Thea. And what I like to do, I like to listen to music and um, dance and, um, yeah, that's, that's, that, that, that's about it. I like, I like listening to music and, and dancing. Music is the heart of passion. And I think that's great that you listen to music. That's great. So Thea, is it? All right, so Ronnie... Thea. All right, good, good. All right, how about you? And points to you, Pat. Uh, hi, my name's Carter, and I like to find answers to things. Oh, a seeker. Seeker of knowledge, okay. That's wonderful, Carter. Is there any kind of knowledge you're trying to seek out, or is there, is there uh, just anything... You know, you're just fingers in all the pots. I mean, look, we all know that the things that go on in this town, the rumors that people spread, someday they're going to get out and everyone that outside of the town, if we try to go out into the world, they're going to think that there's something wrong with us. And I just I want to get the truth to everyone and make sure they understand that there's a reason behind all of this stuff. Oh. You know, when you grow up, you might want to consider a, a membership on the city council because we always need better PR in this town. This town is, uh, you're absolutely right, lots of gossip. I mean, you saw what happened to your old homeroom teacher. Now, I've got confirmation that he's resting comfortably over at Eastbrook Hospital. He's in the heritage wing because it's he's bougie. And so he has a lot of people taking care of him. He's going to be back probably soon. Don't ask me for a date. I can't tell you because they won't let me in. But I know he's, he's going to be fine. He's going to be fine. So you know what? We need more young people like you, Carter, caring about the town. And, all right, well, how about you over there? And points towards Chungus. Uh, hi, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm Chris. 
I, I like to read and play chess. All right, all right. You're pretty fit for a chess player. All right, now that's that's awesome. Uh, have you have you heard have you heard of of the Belgian gambit? That move, that opening move, is just one of those chef's kisses. I haven't gotten that far yet. I'm still working on basic openings and end game mostly. You know what though? Getting your fundamentals down. That's what we're all about here. Excellent. Excellent. Now, how about you over there and points towards you, Moth? What's what's your name? Uh hi, uh, I'm Benji, Benji Roo, and I like running around with my cousin Jason. Just having fun. Family. It's important. It's a thing that we should we should cherish. I get that. Good. Good. And how about you over there? And points towards Ange if Ange is there. I can also skip to Skilly. No, I'm here. Okay. <laughs> um, you can just call me Miss Eden. I like watching people and also movies. That's it. An observer. You know what? Some of the finest cultural critics I've known are observers of people. He, uh, he begins to sort of dab his forehead a little bit. There's a lot to do when you're, when you're observing people. You can learn a lot doing that. And so I'm glad you have that. That's a good quality. Keep it. It's going to serve you well. And how about you? Uh, uh, are you sure you're in the right class? You look a little young to be here. And points to Skeelzy. I'm in the right class. Okay. All right. What's your name? My name's Ellie. Ellie. And what do you like to do? I'm not really sure right now. I'm currently um, actively living through that sort of nightmare where you're not prepared for a test and also you don't have pants. Oh, well, what I'm, what I'm hoping to do is sort of bring a little bit of serenity into your life. I'm hoping to do that. All right. So here's the deal. All of you will be in my homeroom until, like I said, they'll bring in a replacement, but one thing that I'm going to say right now is that everybody's mind is on Mr. F Mr. Forsyth and not really on class. So what I'm going to recommend is go out and get some fresh air. I've already got pre-filled in slips for you in case you get stopped by the cops here. He hands them out to you. Get some fresh air. And see what you can do, well, your homework right now, and see what you can do to find something in the town that you really enjoy. All right? And just write a paragraph about it. Just one thing. If it's more than one thing, great. But just one thing is the middle one. Everybody clear? Yeah. See ya. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So, so you're, just, you're, you're, you're just giving us permission to, like, walk out? Yeah, I am. You look confused. Uh, I, I'm not going to question it. You're the teacher. I'm not going to question it. My mom told me not to question, not to talk back to the teacher, so I'm not going to talk back to the teacher. You know what? You you want us to go? We'll go. I'll go. I'll go. I'll go. Don't mm -hmm. worry. I've already cleared it with the principal. And the thing is, I mean, here, I'll let you in a little secret, all right? Here, we have some work to do. That's going to involve a lot of the adults, and we need the teachers in a meeting. So, if you could just go out and experience the town and the culture and then report back, I think that'll be a good thing. All right? One, one paragraph. Just one paragraph. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then he, you know, claps his hands. And he dismisses class. So, 
What do you all want to do? Ellie goes up and gets one of them their slips and gets out. <laughs> okay. Yeah, ma'am. I'm gonna grab my slip and follow right behind Ellie. Same. Yeah, Carter was like yep. the first pushed to be the first out the door. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, no. Okay. I'm still gathering up all of my supplies and putting them back into my desk and my bag and kind of meandering my way out. I'll probably be the last one out. Okay. All right. Yeah, Chris is like, he grabs a slip and looks it over to see if this isn't like entrapment or something. <laughs> <laughs> you look the library just looks real close to the signatures. The signatures do in fact match the principal and the teachers. Uh, so this seems to be an official thing. And um, Carter, as you're coming out of the classroom, you see the vice principal and the principal heading towards the room, along with uh, a man in a business suit that you've uh, never really seen before, but they keep on calling uh, superintendent. So uh, there's... There seems to be kind of an influx of adults coming towards your room. Uh, this seems to be actually legit um, from what you can tell, at least within, in terms of the slip. Whether it's, you know, shady things are going on in the, in the meeting, I can't tell you yet. <laughs> um, as you leave the room, Ronnie, uh, Mr. Gladstone stops you and goes, you know what is really good place like a really good place to read i used to read there you know immersed in nature is uh well, you know because testament park can get a little crowded right yeah yeah you might want to go there right by the bank there near solitude's rest there's a really good reading spot it's a giant oak and you can just sit there Relax, watch the water, and read. That sounds really nice. Thanks. Yeah. Glad to help. Glad to help. All right. Y'all better better skedaddle. Here come the uh, the stuffed shirts. Hello, Superintendent. Gladstone. And they go and file in. All right. I get my coat and I get out. So. Um, from what you can tell. Most of the students uh, have been dismissed. You're seeing a bunch of students in the hall getting their stuff out of the lockers. And after a short sort of shuffling moment of assembling everything, you get outside. And you're still, I mean, it's up to you. If you want to all be together, if you want to not all be together, whatever you want to do. Carter kind of hangs by the door to watch and see if there are any more adults coming into the building. Ah. There are. You recognize uh, there are two older women. They're, they have shock white gray hair. Um, they definitely look like they're probably in their 60s, but they have that kind of Martha Stewart kind of vibe to it, where they're just very, like, their, their skin is immaculate. You know, very... Uh, almost like Botox wasn't a thing yet, but almost like it was Botox and just very smooth, almost supermodel uh, complexion and composure. And they're, they're walking in with matching handbags that uh, have a large black rose on them, which is usually the insignia of the committee. The committee is the uh, basically govern the governing body uh, in fact, not in name of Briar's Vale. They don't even pay attention to you. They just walk on by. What do you all want to do? I'm going to head well, to that park. Okay. Pat, go ahead. Carter's plan is to wait till all the adults go in and then go back inside himself. Oh, okay. Okay, so Ronnie's heading to uh, that uh, small nature uh, area near Solitude's Rest. You all see Ronnie uh, going in, uh, going, uh, sort of walking away, sorry. And you see Carter going in. There we go. Getting my, getting my names mixed up here. 
So do you, which, uh, do you want to follow Ronnie? Do you want to follow Carter? What do you want to do? I want to follow Carter. Okay. So Miss <laughs> Eden is going to be coming with you, Carter. And then, uh, I won't get us caught. Don't worry. <laughs> and then Tori, you're going to say something. I'm going to follow Ronnie because I don't, Everything's weird, and I don't want to be near the school because everything is weird. That's a I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, that's a legit. There's there's been enough weird. I don't need more weird. All these people walking by are weird. I'm I'm just gonna I'm gonna the, a tree sounds great. A Benji. tree is normal. A tree is normal. Benji, what are you doing? Benji is also gonna follow Ronnie because Benji just wants nothing to do with these people. He's just gonna go to the wood. Yeah. Uh, as uh, w- one more adult files in, uh, Benji, and uh, it is indeed not, no one, none other than the infamous Martha. And Martha gives you a curt nod, and then walks past you. Chris, what are you doing? Uh, I'm going to the school library, see if I can get a novel and uh, find a quiet place to read somewhere. Okay. School library. Probably since they heard us out. Yeah. Okay. And Ellie? Ellie's going to go toward the oak tree. Um, and once she's there, she is going to see about contacting the mayflies. See what they know about what's going on with the adults. Cool. All right. That'll be fun. <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead and handle uh, the Carter's, uh, Carter and Eden situation. Carter Eden. That's a, that's a great like combo name. Uh, <laughs> so you, uh, you're intending to, to investigate. Am I understanding that you're intending to investigate what's going on with the adults? Is that right? Yeah. He wants to try to listen at the door to the classroom where they're meeting. Yeah, I need to hear what's going on. Awesome. So if you could, how do you want to do that? Uh, Do you want to sneak? Do you want to try to assess? This is where I'm going to ask for a roll. I would like to try to assess if you think that's appropriate. Yeah, yeah. Um, It's certainly better at assessing than sneaking. (laughs) Okay. Uh, Eden, how about you? I'm going to sneak. Sneak, sneak, sneak. Okay. So go ahead and roll however many d6s you have uh, so you have uh if you have two dots in assess you're gonna roll two d6 i have a four and a one for a total of five okay so you're just gonna take the highest result because i'm a i'm a kind person <laughs> so you got a got four two fours. you got two fours great okay <laughs> That makes eight, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally, totally, totally. Uh, okay, so as you're, as you're coming up, um, Carter, you are able to assess the sight lines and the overall noise level. So what you're able to do is silently indicate where uh, danger spots are for sneaking and sort of slide past them. You're able to recognize where the sort of blind spots, if you were, uh, if you will, uh, on that on that classroom are. You can hear them pretty, pretty clearly. They're still a little bit muffled, but not too bad. Uh, Eden, you take note of what Carter is pointing at, and you, it, it comes so natural. You're just sitting there in the blind spot and you're able to move with a almost cat-like grace over to the wall and it's very dramatic looking and you're just like "Mm." a a real solid snake moment (laughs) thing i do is dramatic it's okay (laughs) (laughs) and what you hear is this all right we need to talk about the Miss Flanagan and Forsyth situation. This is getting out of hand. We're attracting too much attention. I'm aware of that. But the thing is, is that the Heritage Days Festival 
It's coming up and we need more stock. The supplier is being hesitant. We're not giving them enough. Flanagan and Forsyth, well, they were ripe targets anyway. They were looking too closely. Look, I don't have time to explain to you the amount of risk we are undergoing by even attracting one person's disappearance and the attention it brings. This is a clusterfuck, and you need to understand that. I... I would characterize it as a set of chaotic opportunities. I'm sure you would. Excuse me, uh, yeah, um, I hate to, uh, break up the weird conspiracy party here that's going on, but what are we gonna do about Flanagan? I mean, Flanagan's missing. It's one thing to have a body. We have foresight. But Flanagan? Flanagan, as far as we know, is still in Solitude's rest. <sighs> With any luck, Sylvie will take care of her. <sighs> really? We're relying on that thing. <sighs> when have you ever known Sylvie? or whatever that thing is pretending to be Sylvie, to ever cooperate with us. Well, we do have an ace in the hole to make her cooperate. We still have the... And at this moment, uh, both uh, Carter and Eden, you both hear... Excuse me? Hello? Aren't you supposed to be outside? It seems to be the uh, school secretary. Carter jumps and stands up and is like, well, we were dismissed so quickly. We just needed to use the bathroom before we leave. Huh? As far as I could tell, the bathroom's farther on that way. And you've been here long enough to know that. It looks like y'all were eavesdropping. Help, he was coming with me so that I could get my notebook. I forgot. It's in the classroom. Ah. Uh, okay. He considers this. You're going to have to wait for your notebook. Your notebook is currently occupied. But I can't write my paragraph without my notebook. It's, uh, it's okay. I, uh, I have mine right here. You can write it in mine and, um, we'll just tear the pages out and bring them tomorrow. They're right. We should just, we should just, we'll go. Okay. Hold on. Stay right there. The secretary goes up to the door. Come in. Hi. Um, what is it, Todd? Sorry, Superintendent, Superintendent Daniels, I, um, I don't mean to interrupt, but a student left her notebook, um, and I, uh, wanted to get it. Fine. Where's the notebook? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, excuse me, miss? He pops back out. Where is your notebook? on my desk which one's your desk the one over there in the corner this is my name on it okay and goes and wanders over to the one in the corner picks up opens up the desk sees a single composition book and then brings it out this right here that's the one thank you great one second he takes out a pen from his pocket and he jots down something in, your, in the front page of your notebook. Here you go. And then walks away. Thanks. So, what do you do now? I'm going to look at what it says. <laughs> well, I'm going to walk away. Yeah, we should go outside first. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
So <clears throat> you go ahead and open it up. Un momento as I'm switching around headphones. Uh, you open up the, the composition book and in a very hasty sort of penmanship here, you see they already know what you're doing. Be careful. See me tomorrow. That makes me feel so great. <laughs> Carter is excited about this. <laughs> Carter's like, yes. <laughs> it's like, we've got a lead. This is this is amazing. We have an informant, you mean? An informant. Look, behind every great story, there's a great informant. It's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. All right, folks who are going to... Actually, uh, we'll take care of one more school business. Chris, you said you're heading to the library? Yeah. Okay. So you head over to the library. The librarian's pretty surprised to see you. Um, Mrs. Knopworth. She uh, is cleaning her glasses like I am right now and goes, Is that a student? Hello? Oh, Chris Holstein. All right. Hello, what? Aren't you supposed to be writing a paragraph or something? Hi, Mrs. Knopworth. Um, how did you know about that? Oh, it's my business to know things. Oh, well, yeah, it was supposed to be about what we like to do. And um, I thought I'd come here for inspiration, find something to read while I'm out and about. Ah, so you're looking for inspiration for a, uh, a certain thing. Okay, great. Wonderful. <laughs> Uh, in fact, I think I have just a book for you. And she digs around underneath the desk. And she produces a um, paperback volume that seems to be from a local press that says, um, Briar's Vale, The Two Cities. And she hands it to you. You might find the third chapter to be most interesting. Oh, thank you. Yeah, how did... Well, I must have told you about being interested in the city's history anyway. Uh, so, yes, thank you. I, like I said, it's my business to know things. So, yeah. Anyway, have fun. Don't be too loud. Me loud? <laughs> wow. Paris thought. <laughs> uh, so you go over and you sit. And as you open chapter three... It talks about the, uh, the Rhodes Mansion, otherwise known as Solitude's Rest. There you discover that Sylvie Rhodes was not only uh, one of the founding members of Vermilion Oils, which was the, uh, one of the primary industries on the eastern side of the river, but also that she was betrayed somehow. And that betrayal forced her in, into seclusion at her house until she met an untimely and probably accidental death through drowning. And this, as you're reading, what you're getting, it seems so strange. You, you start to get the sounds of what you're reading, like you can hear them right next to your ear. When it begins to talk about the betrayal, you hear people arguing. When it talks about being in seclusion, you hear the creaks and groans of an empty house. When it talks about the accidental death, you hear splashing, struggling, and suddenly silence and water. Okay, I probably start to get startled by that and then realize that as an avid reader of fiction, I just probably got really into it. You feel something on your shoulder. I leap about four shelves high and whirl around. In the reflection, for just a moment, you could have sworn you saw a woman wearing a brown drab dress with a braided neckline and a smile 
that crept up to her eye and curled down to her jaw. And then you whirl around. And it's just a librarian. Are you all right, dear? You're very jumpy today. Oh, um, well, you know me. I'm pretty jumpy a lot of the time. I see. What did you uh, what did you think of the story of Sylvie Rhodes? It's tragic, kind of scary. Yeah. It is a tragic part of our history. Some would say it was the beginning of the tragedy. The beginning? I mean, what did it lead to? Oh, I'm just a silly old woman. I don't know anything, you know. I'm I'm sorry. I'm just I'm just kidding you. And she kind of playfully, lightly taps you on the shoulder. You know, just a little spooky. You're good. Well, uh, thanks again for the book and for, I guess, waking me up out of my reverie. Of course. You might want to join your friends. I saw them leaving towards Solitude's Rest. I suppose I'll do that. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Have a good day. You as well. All right. <laughs> so, as you're leaving the library, or actually as y'all are uh, leaving the school, Carter and Eden, you see a rather jumpy-looking Chris <laughs> leave the library <laughs> with a book in hand. Do we see Chris? Um... You, as you're walking toward uh, the oak, uh, and you're about mm, not almost, you're not like kind of halfway there. Uh, you're probably you will see Chris, and uh, actually Carter and Eden. Are you heading towards the tree, or are you heading somewhere else? No, yeah, I grabbed Carter and was like, "Come on, we need to find Ronnie." Okay, cool, cool, cool. So you see, uh, Carter. Eden and Carter can decide if he wants to go with me, but no, no, no. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) You see Carter, Eden and Chris heading towards the Oak. What do you all do? Chris looks a little shaky. Just wave him over. Join us. So y'all join everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, so, um, so Mr. Gladstone told me about this tree and said that I should go over there to read because it's like a really good place to read. And uh, I just didn't want to go home because I thought my mom would be mad at me, even though I've got a note. Like maybe she'd think that I faked the note or um, I just thought I would stay here until like school's supposed to end. And and then I could just go home and it's like nothing happened. If my mom asked me about it, I've still got the note. Right. Um, that makes sense. Yeah. That, that makes total sense. I. I don't really want to go home and be alone after the other day. I don't. What if somebody breaks into my house again? Oh, yeah, that's probably really scary. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, Pat, do we we going to say something? Yeah, Carter's kind of sitting, going over his notes, like rubbing his temple, trying to decide what the, the next thing is they have to do he or they or whoever is going to follow the story has to do. Okay. Cool. Benji? Um. Is your push to talk working? Oh, no. It was not. Okay. There we go. Could you repeat the question? Sure. The que- the question is, uh, so you're all gathered around the oak, and you're kind of gathering, and you basically with folks who are, I, I choose, I, I am I uh, correct, and y'all are informing uh, the group what happened with, uh, with the adults in the library, or are you keeping that to yourselves? I oh. mean, I, I want to tell them about it, yes. Okay. But also with kind of like, propositions for what to do next too okay awesome awesome and chris yeah i want to show them the note for sure show them the note. okay i'll tell them about the contents of the book i'm going to leave out the uh accompanying accompanying audio <laughs> the, the the worst audiobook 
Right. So, okay. Um, so given all of that information, uh, the question was, what do you want to do, Benji? Uh, Benji's going to stay around this tree, but it's going to be a little bit farther back, just considering he's only like really known these people for what I assume is to be a couple weeks. So he's like not fully comfortable with everybody, but he still wants to know this stuff. Just move here. You mind? Did, did, did you just move here, Benji? Uh, not just move here, uh, but he's just not much of a talker to other people, you know? Okay. Cool, cool, cool. I'm going to move the camera that way people can see Scalesy. Oh, I'm a secret. <laughs> <laughs> so. Also poodle shenanigans. Oh, yeah, poodle shenanigans. So, um, I'm going to say that you all sort of compare notes, come up with a couple of provisional plans. And then, uh, Benji, you see approaching you a somewhat familiar sight. You've seen this person in the hall. Uh, she is somewhat um, gender ambiguous, wearing a, uh, a blouse and some jeans. And she comes up. And just straight up to you, just just literally straight up to you, and says, "Hello, Benji." She's just staring, like almost like right through you. Benji is a l- little shocked, and he's like, "Oh, uh, hi, hello, oh. hello." Don't worry, I see you're with your friends. Um, I should introduce myself. I've, I, we go to the same school. My name is Charlie. Pleasure to meet you. Uh, it, it's good to meet you too, Charlie. Good. What are you doing here? Well, have you ever had one of those days where everything just talks to you? Uh, I suppose so. Kind of. Okay. Well, I figured I saw a whole bunch of you near here, near Solitude's Rest. And I figured, well, maybe you're here to learn the new word. Because I just learned a new word by just walking over here. The house, it talks a lot. It's a chatty house. Would you, uh, would, would you like to know the new word? Yeah, sure. Okay. So, technically it's two words. I know the first one architectural that I got has to do with buildings the second one I haven't heard before glossolalia I think that's how it's said do you know what that means no uh, I'm afraid not I don't know what that means okay you might have to ask the librarian maybe a dictionary yeah I figured. Okay. Well, all I'll say, I won't bother you any further. I'm sorry for surprising you. But probably be careful. Because, well, at that point, a kid wearing a, um, a Bauhaus t-shirt, t-shirt with a uh, ripped up jeans and a Robert Smith haircut runs over <coughs> uh, to Charlie and goes, Charlie, what, what are you doing? Why are you talking? We were going to meet. Oh, you're having one of your moments again, huh? Charlie's like, they're not moments. They're just guides. It's fine. I'm perfectly safe with these people. <sighs> you don't know that. Uh, I do. <sighs> All right, come on, Charlie. You just just leave these leave these folks alone, all right? Sorry, sorry. Okay. The non-binary urge to bully Crosby Parish. <laughs> Cannot take my headphones. Oh, okay. sorry. Her. Oh, the poodle. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, 
So, you all saw that scene. What do you think? What do you do? Did we hear everything? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Did we hear it or just see it? Uh, you heard most of it. Um, hey, what was the word? What were the what were the words? Uh Architectural glossolalia. Is Benji telling me this? Benji, do you want to tell uh did you want to say that? Hey. Yeah, I want to tell you that. Okay, cool. I, I know those words. Those were on um, in in the spelling bee. Oh, so what do they mean? Well, I mean, architectural. That's that's you know just like buildings and stuff, right? And and the other one, glossolalia, G L O. Um, that one's about talking, but like using different language. Um. It's it's like an unknown language. Um, they usually talk about churches and stuff when they talk about people talking with different languages. Oh, like when people talk in tongues. Yeah, 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 like that. Okay, yeah, no, when you you catch the Holy Ghost and you talk in tongues and you just yeah, yeah that that that's something annoying. you can catch. Should I be worried about this? Do you go to a Baptist church? It's nonsense. No. <laughs> also, architectural. You... Like, does that mean the building starts speaking in tongues? I mean, the building allegedly told them these words, so... Maybe? I'd say, yeah. Building's talking to Charlie. Cool. Fun. So, so can you understand that? Can you understand tongues? Like, is that something you can learn? I, I don't think it's really a thing you can learn. Or a thing that you can translate is how does it know what the house said what if it means that the building itself is just sort of a mess like it's just not right okay wait maybe they're pentecostal and it's a pentecostal church that's saying the things how is a building not right like it's a building it is four walls and some wood haven't you ever been in like the room of a house where like the ceiling is slanted and there's a nook in the corner that seems smaller than the rest of the room. And you know, it isn't because it can't be, but it just looks off. I don't spend a lot of time looking at the walls. You're lucky you never had to go spend the weekend at my grandma's house. Nice. Yeah. I mean like the walls at my house kind of talk sometimes, but every talks. Um, it's just a matter of listening. Yeah, yeah, that's it. You listen to the trees and stuff, right? Sure. So, which house did Charlie said um told them about this? Solitude's rest. Where, where's that? Oh, right there. My point, because it's near-ish. And you see again that. Uh, house that was uh, detailed on the uh, the map that was in Mr. Forsyth's briefcase. In fact, it's the very same house that you saw the rooftop figure. How does it keep coming back to this place? I think we should go in. Look, I'm not Either excited about it, but I think they're keeping somebody there. They said something about mrs flanagan and it sounded like maybe they had her trapped and maybe they were forcing some other person to like watch her or something but it doesn't sound good and they, they might need help who is mrs flanagan your guess is as good as mine mrs flanagan uh let's see uh ellie and chris you would know her to be the history teacher she's the history teacher i'll go ahead and fill them in on what happened the other day um, and did the mayflies have anything to say? So the, uh, the mayflies, hold on. We got to get, we got to get some, some theater here. <laughs> uh, you, you reach out the mayflies actually, um, they kind of receded a little bit when Charlie was around. 
um, but they weren't necessarily like upset about it. They were just kind of, you know, there. And what you hear from the Mayflies is just the necklace, the ritual, beware the desert, use the necklace, use the ritual. And uh, before they sort of vanish again, they say, beware, beware the visceral construct. So that's what they said. Um, out of game note, did all y'all watch the VOD from Thursday? Okay. I watched Thursday. You might have to sum it up. Okay. Um, and if you want to do it in character, you can. That's probably going to be for the best. Um, so Mrs. Flanagan is the history teacher. Um, we had a field trip to Solitude's Rest the other day. Um, she collapsed after saying the same, well, after she collapsed and after she was unconscious, she started saying the same stuff that Mr. Flanagan did, or sorry, Mr. Forsyth did, about the moons, the tides, the fires, the dust. Um, I found this, and she pulls out the porcelain jewelry box, um, that doesn't have a necklace in it. Um, and I think it's important, it was in the office, um, uh, Melvin, I, I think his name was, um, but I, I don't think it matters anymore. Um, he, he, um, he said he was going to call an ambulance for her, but when one of my classmates picked up the phone, there was no, nobody was making any calls and an ambulance never showed up. Um, and then Melvin, um, chased me and some of my friends down into the basement. Um, and, and we saw... The, the lady, um, she was she was in a room in the basement, um, and we sort of trapped her in there. He just sort of stood at the t top of the of the stairs and stared. And so we put a bunch of glass and pool balls on the stairs while we tried to find a way out to keep us safe. And and he fell, and his face was just just torn to pieces. And and he still kept coming. And he got a hold of Dell, and 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 she got away. And we broke the fence, and and got out. But um, the, the cops came and there there were gunshots and I, I don't know what happened um, and I don't know who called the cops um, and I, 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 I just don't know. It, that's a lot. It, it, yeah. I, I wasn't, I wasn't doing great last time. I'm sorry. Are you okay? Yeah. Yeah. I just, it, it's, it's the sort of thing where like, you know, you left something unfinished. And you just know it in your bones, and and it it, it won't leave me alone. And I, I found I found a black envelope in the desk with the jewelry box. Um, and I I I'm sorry I didn't say anything, but it's just like the one that Forsyth had, and it's just like the one that was in Dorothea's store. There was a card too, and it it said you're in tight. Just like Forsyth's. We're connected to it. Look, we there's obviously something bad still happening there they just talked about mrs flanagan and the house when we were inside listening to them so whatever it is it's not done there i i don't this is gonna sound weird um i don't think any of this is sounded this normal is, so go ahead yeah. <laughs> i i don't i don't think melvin's uh, alive um when he when he went upstairs to call an ambulance for mrs flanagan and he didn't there there was no noise um but he was gone and a couple minutes later um when he came back downstairs he was i i don't really have a good way to describe it except for this one movie that i watched with my dad um where this this mad scientist guy um, stitched together a bunch of dead people and he had bolts in his neck and, and didn't move very well and was just very stompy. Um, Frankenstein? Yeah, yeah, that one. Um, like somebody uh -huh. just... Like he was on strings. Uh, it, it, it wasn't stomping. It was, it was more like... 
Have you ever seen one of those puppets on strings and the way their legs don't move quite right? So, yeah. so somebody Frankenstein this dude? I, I don't know, but he doesn't talk right anymore either. He talked fine when we went in and when his footsteps were quiet, but when he came back downstairs, his his voice was wrong. Like the 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 way he said words, um, like the the emphasis was out of order. Maybe he had a stroke. No. I mean, maybe when he fell down the stairs, but he still got a hold of Dell pretty well. And Dell was climbing a tree. To try and get over the fence. So there's a teacher and a Frankenstein and a lady. I don't. In that creepy house. I don't know that the lady is in. I, I mean, there's one way to find out. No, it's it's not that. It, I mean, it, we, we keep seeing her. She's the one that was on the roof um, when we were in Dorothea's room. It's the same lady. She she was in the room in the basement, and Melvin knew. Like he was. This talking. lady just follows you around. Not. I mean, you were in the house, and you were in Dorothea's room. Has nobody else seen her? That was the first time I ever saw her. Me too. I've never seen her. Yeah, I only saw her in Dorothea's room. Carter, like, lets out a sigh and says, Okay, can I... you all keep a secret? Yeah. I only know y'all, so. I think there's a group of go donut donuts. Grown ups. Then <laughs> maybe they are donuts. Uh, grown ups donut who are grown making ups. people sick. I don't know how they're doing it. I don't know why they're doing it. But I think that explains a lot of the stuff that you're talking about. Like, I don't think that they're dead. I think they're just sick from something. She's and not I've been trying right. to figure out what. I mean, there's a lot of sicknesses that can make you not right. One time, my aunt had, like, some kind of disease after she came back from traveling. And she was real weird for a while. I'm not crazy and I can show you. I, I didn't think you were. No, I believe yeah, you, but I, we believe I, you. I think they're doing it on purpose. And I think that it's from something that's different in this town and that it explains a lot of the weird stuff that's going on. I don't think it's ghosts or, or dead people, but I think you're right. I think Maybe it's some ghosts. Well, we'd need a lot of proof of that, but. It's clearly something. We barricaded her in that room. If she's made of meat, she is still in there and can't get out. But we saw her at Dorothea's. That man but should you, have died when he went down the stairs. His Wait, you, you locked her in the basement before you saw her at my house? Yeah. And she just... She, she just hulked her way out? You, you saw how she was bending. If she's made of meat, she's even wronger than if she's not. No, I'm not gonna think you're crazy. There's too much weird stuff going around in this town. At this point, I'm gonna believe anything. You can tell me you're the Queen of England. <laughs> I'm not. So, knowing all of this, are we actually talking about going in there? Because that sounds yes. crazy to me. That's how people end up on milk cartons. Listen, you, you need facts, right? I've watched you in class. You... You love to, to learn stuff. So how do you gather evidence besides going and seeing what's happening or running experiments? From books, magazines, articles, newspapers. Not Wouldn't it be point. great to do it in real life so you could get firsthand information? Nobody it, else would know but us. It would not. Other people do that so I don't have to. I don't know that we have a choice. We barricaded her in that basement and she still showed up at Dorothy. And mm -hmm. I don't think she's just following me. Well, if a barricade won't stop her, maybe something else will. You guys have seen, like, horror movies, right? Like, maybe we need a bunch of salt. Um, I, I pull the, the jewelry box out of my closet. I, I found this in the desk in the office. This... Why in would this office? be in an office? The office in the, the, the house, I'm sorry. Um, it's, all, it's all very scattered. You stole a jewelry box? 
I mean, I think she's dead, so ownership is sort of a loose concept. <laughs> okay, She's not wearing modern clothes, and Melvin certainly wasn't wearing it. And it's just a box. There's no necklace in it. But if it wasn't in the office, like this, this belongs, belongs on a dresser. This belongs with where you get ready. It doesn't belong in a desk drawer in an office that hasn't been used in years. Maybe they were going to gift it to someone and they forgot. Empty? Maybe they didn't, they were saving money. Melvin drove there. He doesn't live there. No one lives there. Look, the way I see it, we've got three leads. We can go to Solitude's Rest. We can try to go talk to Mr. Forsyth in the hospital, but they're never going to let a bunch of kids in to talk to him. And then we've got this note on Eden's notebook, but we can't really investigate yeah. that until tomorrow. So it sounds like we only have one option. If we want to know anything today. I agree. You hear... Right, ask the bugs. Oh yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Ronnie. D ask the bugs, like, because you talked to them, right? Points to... Ellie. Ellie, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, uh, skills ace person. Uh, yeah, Ellie, uh, you, you talked to... There were bugs? Um, I, I'm not yeah. sure. Y'all talk to bugs. Nobody no, can talk to no, bugs. They, be serious. Don't me in with them. I mean, normal. this is normal. This is just you guys really... believe that somebody talked to a house. What's different about talking to bugs? No, at least bugs are alive. Talk to it's writing on the wall or something. It can't be literal. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what they are, but I don't think they're bugs. I I think they they just call themselves mayflies. I think. Oh. Oh okay. Um. No, it's too late in the season for for. Mayflies. They 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 started coming to me in dreams. Um, but now I can just sort of ask. Ever since a couple years ago, I don't I don't know. But hey, so you have imaginary wrong. bugs for information? They haven't steered me wrong. You know what? I mean, At this I'm point, not, I'm not. I'm I'm just. I'm I, just I'll, I just. I just. Okay, fine. You know what? I'll just I'll I'll go along with it. Whatever. This this town is weird. All these people here are weird. I'll just go along with it and hopefully I'll get enough evidence to convince mom we need to go back home. No one leaves. This... I'm sorry. What do you mean no, no one leaves? leaves. You all hear uh interrupting your conversation. You all hear uh the voice of the uh Robert Smith looking dude. And he goes, are you going to stand there like arguing about this whole thing or are you going to save Miss Flanagan's life? I know you're not fond of teachers, but at the same time, if you don't go in there now, she's going to die. Are you going to answer my questions this time, Parrish? Or are you going to run, run, run away like a big baby again? <sighs> what is this kid? I, hi, Ellie. I don't know, who the hell, who are you talking to like that? Not me. <sighs> the, Sorry. My name is Crosby. You met Char Charlie already. Hi. Hey, we Charlie. we were we were going to get some ice cream, and then we noticed, well, you all gathering here. And it occurs to me that maybe we we have similar purposes. You all aren't going to be saved if you just leave it alone. However you want to cash it out, you know, some kind of illusion, some kind of holographic thing, some kind of conspiracy, all of it's right. Well, that's not entirely true, Crosby. It, look, you want to explain the whole thing to him? No, that's what I thought. <sighs> so, I mean, I'm, I'm all ears. I'm willing, I'm willing to listen to, what? I mean, at this point, we've got talking houses, talking bugs, to, to, to. Ghosts, Frankenstein's, a lady who who bends like I'm. She bends wrong. I'm ready. I'm. Tell me whatever you want. I'll, I'll believe it. He's not a Frankenstein. Are you gonna be a cryptic? 
cryptic jerk your whole life, Crosby, or are you going to actually answer a question straight for once? Okay, Ellie. Yes. Solitude's rest is what some people would call haunted and other people would call infected. Solitude's rest is where everything begins. What's messed up in this town, all right? And if you... Look, we don't have a huge amount of time. Miss Flanagan is still alive in there. Charlie confirmed that, right, Charlie? I still hear her thoughts. That's right. Her heartbeat's threading, though. That's a problem. Yeah, I know it's a problem. Originally, a couple of friends of mine, we were going to go take care of it. But y'all are here. And, well, there's more of you than there are of us. And we do have a pressing thing on the other side of town that we really, really need to get to. Hi, Crosby. What do you mean take We're care 11. of it? How are we supposed to carry her out with, with tall and stompy in there? <sighs> the necklace is the key, all right? The necklace is not in the box. It's in the house. So we have to go in the house, fight Frankenstein, and help a lady we don't know. Yeah, I guess if you want to put it that way. But the thing is, she's already locked onto you. After she's finished with Flanagan, she's just going to move one by one. And soon it doesn't matter if you believe or not. She's just going to drain No, I believe. I just don't want to deal with it. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Uh, (laughs) Who, who's locked on to me? I didn't even do anything. I just moved here. You saw her. Crosby. The, the bendy lady? Yeah. Crosby. What? Melvin drove here. Is he still here? Or did the police... Or did the... Goddamn. Or did the police take him? Well... <coughs> the police didn't take him... They took a part of him. He's, I don't know how she did it. Sylvie, Sylvie did something to Melvin. There's two of him. I can't explain it either. It's, it's, it's bonkers. But they took. Sylvie is the bendy lady. Yeah, Sylvie Rhodes. And there's two Frankensteins? Well, kind of half of a Frankenstein, if you will. explains why he was quiet. Which half? He wasn't. If it's the top half, we don't have to worry about him chasing us. <laughs> that's a good point, but I don't think that's what Crosby meant, because the, the quiet, the, the one that moved quiet was, was sort of like an actual person, and, and the one that, was, that made noise was, was more like a puppet. Yeah. That's about right. Body and soul have come, come apart. If you want to think of it that way, it's not exactly correct. But it's close enough. How long? Melvin? No. You said we didn't have a lot of time. Oh. 18 hours. That right, Charlie? That's correct. Well, technically, right now, 17 minutes, or 17 hours and 45 minutes. Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. So we lost 15 minutes talking about this. What are we waiting for? Let's go. Uh, Charlie. Uh, yes. Hi, Ellie. Do you know where in the house the necklace is? I would because look... that basement's a mess. I would look upstairs. Oh, good. Where Stompy came from. Crosby, we need to go. Gwen is, um... She's... Yeah, I know, I know. What about Kelso? Oh, he's on his way. Yep. He just got there. Okay, we gotta go. Good luck. Thanks. And they run off. Bye, Charlie. Does he have a pager or something? (laughs) (laughs) It's a rhetorical question. It's like anything weird and creepy is a dog whistle for him. The worst. (laughs) He's the worst, yeah. Um, Okay, so. We, uh, so people have decided we're gonna infiltrate Solitude's Rest. Now, you can, I'm going to sort of, thankfully we've streamlined this. There are six different plan styles here. 
Um, and you can see them on page 23 and 24 of the handbook. Um, I'm going to say, just for the sake of time, uh, someone, in fact, I'll, I'll go ahead and choose. And you know what? Let's, let's, let's Pat, you're going to go ahead and choose for us the plan style. If you could roll a d6, each plan style uh, is assigned like one is kicking the door, two is lying and cheating, three is quick and quiet. So go ahead and roll a d6 and let's see what we get. So we've got a four, which is the veil asunder. Oh, cool. <laughs> All right, the veil asunder, which is a risky approach that utilizes supernatural forces to engage. So um, I just need one detail uh, from you all. Uh, it could be from anyone. Uh, the occult methodology that you use to infiltrate. Well, I mean, does talking to bugs count as an occult methodology? <laughs> it does indeed. Talking to bugs does indeed talk, count as an occult methodology. And you can hybridize. Ellie, too. I believe um, Ellie. So I'm sorry, Ronnie. What? I do want to tell Ellie I believe her. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I have ants that live in the wall of my mom's house, and well, um. I hear them sometimes. So like, I believe you, I believe that that mayflies do talk to you and that it's real. So, um, yeah. I appreciate so, it. I don't think they're actual mayflies. I think they just call themselves. Okay. But, oh, that's but I think suspicious. we hear them. Yeah. All right. So we're going to go in this place. Um, do we want to see if they have anything to say about that or can they help? Do they, are they helpful? Uh, sometimes. Okay, um, like sometimes um, the ants are helpful for me, or or the locusts. So, um, I mean, let's... I I I asked earlier, um, and they said that the neck. Sorry, what? No, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, they said uh, that the neck something about the necklace and a ritual and to beware the desert, uh, to use a necklace and to use a ritual. And they said, beware the visceral construct, but I don't know what visceral means. Oh, um, I don't think I had that word in the spelling bee. Visceral? Yeah. It, good. it means body. Oh, do we think that's melting? Like, I, I suppose. Okay. Can I ask them again? Do they have anything? Um, so what I'm going to do, uh, Ronnie and um, Ellie, go ahead and roll me shivers. Oh my god, I'm made of noise except for when I want to be. <laughs> I got a six. You're not adding for this, right? Yeah, just the highest result. You got a six? Okay. Yeah. My highest was a four. Awesome. Okay. Uh, Ronnie, I'm going to go with you first. So as your cognition seeps into the ground and you begin to hear the bustle of ants and beetles, one thing that seems to happen is that as the closer you get to Solitude's Rest, one, there's an ingress point in the back. There's, there's a stream of activity. The fence is broken. Two. They don't like the basement. Three, they're pretty sure that the destroyer of their nests lives in the second floor bedroom near the window. Okay. Uh, All right. Ellie? Yeah. Uh, the mayflies, they go... You all have to touch the necklace. You all need to touch the necklace. Where is it? The, de the desert, the upstairs. The upstairs, the desert. Flanagan will wake. But you said, you said to, you said to the desert. Mm -hmm. 
So. Okay. <laughs> Love that for us. Yep. Okay. So you both have provided some critical uh, information for the engagement role. Oh, does everyone have heart sold shoes? Um, what? heart, hard sole shoes. Yeah, like, like running shoes. There, there's so much glass on the basement stairs. So, so oh. much. Glass. Oh, yeah. Oh, but the, I've got some they, boots. They don't like the basement. But that's how we. I'd, that's unless we yeah, can find another way in. It's probably the only way. That's how we got out. But, but the ants said that like, um, who, whoever was there that's bad for them is in the in the second floor what is so i guess the basement might be okay well wait i've i've already been in the house and i've i've been in the basement and i know the layout and i know the room that she was in oh what if i oh god <sighs> you memorized the layout after being in there one time i have a good memory for that sort of thing um what if I go in alone and open the front door? Or you oh, could not, no. and I'll go with you. I've seen enough horror movies. One person does not go alone. No. no. Okay, okay, but promise, promise you'll listen to me and not touch doors that I tell you not to. I'm not touching anything. Do you think I need something haunting me? Um, yeah, y'all don't get Freddy Kruegered, okay? <laughs> I'm not sleeping anytime soon. I'll stay right by the basement window and you just yell if you need help. Oh, there's my hands in my pockets. It's just the door. Fine, by the door then. Okay. Okay. This will be interesting. You rolled and I'm upset. Uh huh. I don't know what you rolled. I'm, I'm upset. The engagement roll. Oh no. An engagement roll determines oh. your opening position. Oh. The opening scene, if you will, of the procedure. <sighs> So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the map view very quickly. Okay. Mm -hmm. And now you all can see a map. It does not have the basement, you note, but it's something. Oh, I know the basement. I'll never forget the basement. Uh, so when <laughs> I love that Jess says, you look too happy, Jeef. It's sus. <laughs> Jeef is sus. That's the thing. <laughs> That's true. I am. Um, so. You all make it into the basement fairly easily. However, Carter, which, uh, which window are you waiting near? I guess I'm waiting near the basement door. Basement door. Okay. Yeah. Basement so door. I can help if I hear any trouble. Okay. Where is the, like, where's the basement door compared to, like, where we would come up? So the basement... Yeah, it's in the, so if you see on first floor, the dining room, you see that little uh, stairway with the hall. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the basement door is sort of beneath uh, that little, uh, it's like that little stairway out you can see here, which is marked. Hold on, let me give you, I'm going to put up the yellow card. I don't actually have a yellow card. Um, I'm just like marking the map. Okay, it's like right over here. Where the where the little yellow rectangle is dancing. Dancing. <laughs> okay. So. Pop. Okay. So you're in there. As you're passing by, the the whole place smells damp. You have this overwhelming. You have this overwhelming feeling. In fact, I'm gonna do this. This overwhelming feeling of loneliness. And not a loneliness of, like, sadness. It's like a confirmation of everything socially ambiguous. All those anxious thoughts in your head that ask, do they really like me? Do they really know me? Do they want me to be around? Those thoughts finally, it feels like they're receiving answers finally that are certain. And the answer is always no, they don't. So you feel a sinking into your gut slowly as you're walking through the basement. 
you pass by the stairway. You pass by the furniture detritus near the little smoking lounge. And as you're doing so, you begin to notice that some of the chairs against that door are rattling. And they begin to rattle more and more and more until finally the door slams open. The furniture absolutely just almost explodes. Some of you are hit with some shrapnel, but it's nothing too bad. It's just scrapes, superficial stuff. But the weird part is that there's no one standing in the door. It's just open to a bleak void. Come on. You gotta go. As you all are going upstairs, you hear a familiar sound coming from upper in the house. That's him. They know we're here. Behind you. We should go. Behind you from the door in, uh, that just exploded open. You hear... So what do you all do? I hide behind Ellie. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ellie's gonna stand between them and Sylvie and t like gesture them up the stairs. As, I think as far as, the stairs. Yeah, as far Carter as probably <laughs> Carter probably came in behind them when he heard the explosion because he's worried about legit them. Yeah, absolutely legit. Carter, you're coming in the basement. And you see, suspended in the air, a woman who is sort of like this. I don't know if you can see on the camera that very well this position. Here, let me, let me, there we go. <laughs> it's a teapot. Yeah, it's, it's, like a, it's like a horrible marionette teapot thing going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she is wearing a brown drab dress, braided neckline. And her, her, the smile is no longer this way. What's happening is that her mouth is kind of overtaking her nose a little bit and then it's stretching down her chin. Her eye is beginning to lag downward. And she looks directly at you and says, You are invited. What do you do? Perfect. So nope. he, <laughs> he wants to he he freezes. Mm -hmm. he's, he's afraid. Yeah. Um and but he's also still concerned uh, about the others in the basement. Right. So is it could I potentially make an assess role to try to determine like where they are? Yeah. What their situation is if like if I just turn around and book it am I leaving them to die basically because he wouldn't want to do that okay uh yeah go ahead okay so I got two dice two fours so I got a four okay so it's a little tough to figure out where everybody is because everyone's basically panicking <laughs> uh, and heading up the stairs uh it seems and but from what you can tell, none of them have been attacked and none of them are in like it, the, the Sylvie's attention is very firmly on you. So right now they, they seem to be getting away. Okay. I think Carter says, Hey old lady, if I'm invited, 
why don't you come and get me? And then starts to try to move away from the others for like back away into the basement, not necessarily out the door, but sort of in that direction, but back into the basement more. Okay. Awesome. Does Ali uh, hear Carter? Yes. Okay. Um, Car- she's going to tell the others, find the necklace and then she's going to book it to a different part of the basement. Okay. And start. I mean, if we got to bait her, let's go. Carter's not doing it alone. That's fucking teamwork. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So who's all in the house? It's me and who's with me? So you, uh, Ronnie, Thea. Cri- oh, Thea did come in. Uh, Chris, mm-hmm. did you come in? Yes. Okay. Uh, Benji, did you come in? Yeah, I did. Okay, awesome. And Ellie. Oh, so everyone. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't sure if Chris and Thea stayed outside because they were adamant that they did not want to be here. <laughs> <laughs> That's legit. No. No, I, I was going to go in because if the answer to, to getting out of this town is is upstairs in that house, then I'm I'm going. So on my screen right now is an empty progress clock. This will slowly fill depending on the actions of the players. It can also unfill depending on the actions of the players. Okay. So right now, but is anyone- Sylvie is on is it somewhat enraged and on her she's floating toward you carter and she looks like she's slowly becoming more substantive so we have one one little tick there ellie's gonna hook a pool wall at her okay uh the whole time yeah this is going on too carter just keeps repeating uh, like while well, he's kind of shaky breath, he's like, "It's just like Ghostbusters. That's just a movie. It's just like Ghostbusters. That's just a movie. It's Aww. just like Ghostbusters. That's just a movie." Aww. Aww. So, you uh, huck a. Uh, what do you want to use to to huck that? Uh, probably mess with or destroy. Okay. Uh, let me see. The rest of you, what are you doing? I am. Heading up the stairs to find um, the necklace that we were told was on the second floor. Okay. Cool. Yeah, this is where I'm going. Beat up? Okay, go ahead and roll that. Um, Right. So, Eden, Chris, Ronnie, what are you doing? Heading upstairs. Okay. Benji? Uh, Can I... Is it possible to sneak behind this thing and then no, throw something at it from there? Uh, that's, that's basically what I'm doing. Yeah. So if you want to join Ellie in that, if you want to assist in that teamwork action, absolutely. Yes. Uh, that's what I want to do. So uh, what do you want to roll for that? Can I roll sneak to be extra sneaky? Yeah, you can roll. You can roll sneak. Absolutely. Okay. So, Chris. Eden, uh, Thea, and Ronnie are all heading upstairs. Is that correct? Yeah, I'm going to try to be as sneaky as possible, darting in and out of the rooms upstairs looking for the necklace. Yep. Okay. Same. I'm, I'm, I'm following behind Eden, you know, going through, you know, drawers and whatever else that while they are going through them as well. <laughs> okay. So that's what that's your that's your goal. Cool. Since I'm kind of like a sneaky person, I feel like I think would, I don't know if I would have an easier time thinking of like hiding spaces. You, it, that, uh, we will actually get right to that. I'm going to get to the pool ball action and then we'll, we will get right to that. Cause that's exactly where I was going. Okay. okay. Pool ball action. You rolled a five. a five and Ellie's going to yell, Hey, ugly, try doing some laundry and run up the stairs. Okay, so we're doing the tank pull. <laughs> yeah, I'm pulling aggro because I gotta get to the office. That's where Flanagan was. Okay. Plus ten taunt. Uh, plus ten taunt. <laughs> Fight me. <laughs> Minus fifty DKP. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, you you throw the pool ball. The pool ball goes straight through her so- shoulder. Does she react at all? She does. She she looks she kind of whips around and you see there her entire face uh 
sort of melts off Sel Salvador Dali style and shrieks at you. Tag bitch, you're it. <laughs> wow. Bold, bold, bold. Um, so, uh, Benji, uh, you rolled sneak. What did you get? Uh, I have two sneak. Do I roll yep, two, two dots and yep. sneak? Do I roll twice or once? You roll two d6s and then take the highest result. Okay. Uh, highest result is a three. Okay. So what you do is after uh, you see Ellie do the taunt, um, you are trying to get in position so that way you can somehow, again, distract her. Um, as uh, And like perhaps you take a piece of furniture or something like that. Um, it's up to you. Um, but something where you're going to gain her attention. Um, but you have to surprise her to do it in order to sort of shock her a little bit. So, right, you found a great position for that. Um, it's not, like, super hidden, but it's uh, it's enough. It's enough. So, what do you want to do next? A push to talk. Had, had a moment. Oh, technical difficulties here. It's okay. <laughs> Is there... So, from what I understood, I'm by shelves. Is there anything on these shelves? There are. There's mirrors and tools and dusty, dusty boxes and things like that. What are the tools there? Uh, there's a really dilapidated hammer and a and a pliers, a piece of pliers. <laughs> I wonder. I wonder if she knows what she looks like. What do you mean? I mean, if she's not corporeal, throwing something else at her is just going to draw her attention. It's not actually going to do anything. But I wonder if she can see herself. She's so obsessed with geometry. Interesting thought. What do you think, Benji? Uh, do I, I know this thinking of Ellie? Is Ellie going to show me this? Tell me this somehow? At this, uh, she can't. She doesn't even know you're there. <laughs> at, at this point, oh. it's up to you. Um, for right now, I'm allowing some light metagaming prim primarily because this is a tutorial. So... If you want to go ahead and take that idea, you can. Okay. Is push to talk having a moment? It is. Okay. <laughs> so I keep the fingers be missing the button, man. It's okay. It's all good. <laughs> I'm going to use that metagame moment to grab a mirror and kind of not very casually, but like walk up to this lady and show her her own El Salvador face. Okay. Sounds good. Salvador Sounds good. Dali. Salvador Dali, yes. El Salvador is a place. Yes, I just... History class is my last class, man. <laughs> good, you're right. I okay. mean, it was Flanagan's too. Yes, <laughs> indeed. Uh, so, you go up to the... You, uh, you sneak around, and you find a mirror on the shelf. And then you show... You, you get uh, the attention of uh, Sylvie, and you show the reflection. And rather than running in fear, what Sylvie does is seemingly pour herself into the mirror. And then she's gone. Did Ellie see that? Yes. Oh shit, mirrors are doors, mirrors are doors, mirrors are doors, and she's going to book it for the office to see if Lanigan is still there. Do you look inside the mirror, Benji? I do not. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I don't drop this thing. I just, I set the mirror down very carefully, not looking at it, and then I book it with Ellie. I am not dealing with this. Too spoopy for me. <laughs> Carter, you just saw a whole entire woman get sucked into a mirror. Yes. <laughs> and he's continuing to tell himself it's special effects like in a movie. Okay. Like clearly this is like some kind of serious operation here because they have it set up like a haunted house. Right. Designed to scare them. But he's also still really scared because, you know, yeah. A child and That's legit. Things are are, are real right now. But seeing that it seems like everything's okay, he wants to go upstairs to help with whatever's going on up there. Okay. Else. So the upstairs crew. Hello, thank you for waiting. You all have been very patient. I appreciate you. 
I mean, where are we going to go? Into more rooms? No, thanks. <laughs> I've been very careful not to touch doors. Doorknobs. <laughs> you make it past all the broken glass. You see some pool balls. And now you're in the kitchen. The kitchen, Ellie, by the way, has changed. What the, the hell? The kitchen is no longer a well-kept kind of historical relic of times gone by. It is now, it looks like a coal kitchen, like an old sort of coal oven, as well as sort of dilapidated, almost tobacco stains. And and you can't tell if it's mucus, bug guts, or pus, but it's oh, like, like a smear on the drawers. Parasite Eve, and now this. <laughs> And I don't want to touch anything. Do I have gloves? Does Ronnie have gloves? <laughs> Does anyone have gloves? <laughs> I might actually. I might have some gloves because I've got like a little container with a magnifying glass, and I've got a couple of small nets, and I've got um, I've got like an aspirator. So I, yeah, I might have some gloves. You have gloves. I've got a I got I've got a medic bag, so I'm assuming that I have yeah. like you got some, some latex gloves. Some there. some some of those. Uh, what are they called? Night, Nitro? Night, yeah, thank you. That was, I'm like, not late trial. That's wrong. <laughs> okay. Uh, it is a place of rot. It is a place of decay. Um, and all the while you hear... Uh, look, we have the visitors again. A return guest... Did Ellie hear that? Yes. <laughs> oh. And we're straight up. Is he upstairs okay. with them or is he downstairs with me? Upstairs. Yeah, I'm uh, going to rifle through this kitchen as fast as I can with the gloves on. Okay. Ellie is going to continue pursuing her master's degree in tauntology and is going to head toward the direction My where bit. the office was. Okay. And start yelling, hey, ugly, where's the rest of your face? Is it back in the yard? <laughs> this is a, a two-story <laughs> building, correct? Correct. And he's Can I find the stairs to the up upstairs? Yep, that's where he's coming from. Oh, good. No, no, just kidding. Right. Just kidding. JK, JK, JK. JK. I'm going to I'm gonna search the drawers and see if I can find, like, a knife or... You both... Kill it. You both find uh, a knife and an ice pick. I'm, I'm going to take the knife. Okay. Ronnie, do you want the ice pick? Sure, yeah. Okay. You got a nice pick. You got a knife. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Uh, and I'm also going to pull my shirt up over my nose because this place looks like it smells terrible. It does. It smells like um, old wound. I don't want to breathe whatever this is in. Yeah. It 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 looks like it smells like an infection. Mm -hmm. Rotting flesh, the new candle. <laughs> From Yankee Candle. <laughs> hey, Frankenbutt, where's your jaw? <laughs> Can I hide somewhere out of sight mm -hmm. like so that when he passes down the stairs i can sneak up the stairs yes yeah the kitchen is uh so the uh, the stairway is at the beginning of the hall the kitchen is the at the at the end of the hall so you're can we see the map again yeah we can see the map also what's the front door situation uh, he's gonna want to unlock that the front door situation the front door is broken because of the cop he broke it in Oh, good. So we have an exit point. Yes. I love that for us. It doesn't involve the basement. Right. So we have the kind of hall here. So dining room, just replace dining room with kitchen. So, and then we have the hall and the longer hall that goes down to the parlor, which is the office. And uh, then there's the library and a billiard room. Is what? Old rotting mansion doesn't need a billiard room. Mm -hmm. okay. Exactly. So the stairs are right outside the kitchen then. Yep, right outside the kitchen. And Ellie's leading him down the long hallway toward the, the, the parlor. Right. Right now, our boy, eh, we're going to use the, the, I should like it a little token thing. Uh, he's come down the stairs 
And right now he's in this this hallway right here. So the hallway directly south of the dining room. I'm gonna make you a little token thing. <laughs> yeah, I need a, I need a little token thing. So we gotta run toward him to get up or down the stairs at this point. Um, right now he's facing Ellie. Um, so you're are you still in the base? I'm a little unclear. Are you still in the basement? Or are you up? Or are you on the first floor? On the first floor. Okay. She, so I'm, I'm I'm operating under the assumption the assumption that she was the first one of the second group. Yeah. That came into the kitchen. Okay. And cool. since she already has a bit of an idea of the layout of the ground floor, she's one trying to get to Flanagan or yeah. where Flanagan was. I don't know if she's still there. Um, and also because she forgot to tell them where Flanagan is, she knows that they're going to be focusing on the upstairs. Okay. Cool. So, Ellie, uh, Ellie is uh, basically in that hall and taunting and running towards the uh, center hall, and. You all see a large, about six foot four, uh, man who is, he looked like he was wearing a nice suit, but it's now covered in scratches and tears and frays. And you catch a glimpse of his face and it looks like he's been completely cut up with glass. Just glass shards sticking out of his out of his cheeks. Oh hey, you found my bottle. Come give it back. He begins. Frankenstein, dude. And he begins pounding towards you. Oh little one, I've missed you. I want oh. to show you everything. I'm sure you would. You gotta catch me first, asshole. All right, so you're running towards the parlor. Yep, and there's an archway. She's going to loop that bastard. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to... It's phasmophobia. Kite, let's go! You're going to kite the Frankenstein. <laughs> uh, so, you get to the office. Miss Flanagan is not there. Uh, of course she's not. All right, upstairs crew. I'm going to focus on you in a little bit. Uh, Carter, are you staying downstairs or going upstairs? I think he wants to run upstairs with the group to try to find the the necklace. Uh, the necklace so we can get out of here. Sweet. And Ellie's keeping up with the, just a constant stream of taunts so they can tell where she is in relation to Asbag. Okay. So, second floor. Here we go. Here we go. There are, as soon as you get up the stairs, um, uh, you see uh, to your left a library uh, and then two doors. And directly in front of you is uh, another uh, bedroom. To the right, two more bedrooms. Uh, which one do you want to go to do the thing? Or do you want to split up? Do you want to do it together? What do you want to do? Carter points out that, that that weird guy said something about a bedroom near the window. Good. All right. A, a bedroom near the window. Okay, well, there's a lot of windows. Like, it, there's... there's don't, don't all these rooms have windows? They do all have windows, but only one is near the uh, basement entrance window as far as uh, uh, lengthwise on the house. And that okay. is the one to the right. Uh, so you're coming up the stairs into the hall onto the right and then immediately another right. So the chamber that's 14 by 14 near the bathroom. Yeah, that's the one he wants to try to get inside of. Okay. So... You see Carter taking off for the 14 by 14 chamber. What are the rest of you doing? I am following Carter. Okay, so Carter and Ronnie, see ya. Uh, I'm going to follow them and, and keep close because I've, I've seen horror movies and I know what happens when you get left alone. Okay, Chris? I'll go with them as well. Um, I'm trying to find anything that looks like a good-sized... Like, this place is rotten, but a good sized piece of like a comforter or something sturdy enough to move somebody on. Okay, great. Uh, Eden. Were they upstairs or were they on the first floor? Uh, Sorry, second floor. Part. Yeah. We're all on the second floor. Yeah. On the second floor. You, you, well, except Ellie. Yeah. Hey, mush mouth. Okay. You get it? Cause last um, time I was here, I turned your mouth into mush. <laughs> except for I'm going to head toward, Sorry. I, 
It's okay. You're good. There's other noise. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, I'm going to head towards the... the which 14 by 14 chamber did Chris go? Uh, the one on the south, in the south, not the one in the north. Okay, so I'm going to go to the other one. Okay, so you're going to go to the one north. Great. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, and Benji, what are you, what are you doing? Um, Benji is going to... Push and talk moment. Ah, I'm going to turn this off after I say this. Okay. But um, before I say that, uh, Num Dinosaur, I'm so sorry. What was your character's name? Um, thankful Eden, but they are all calling her Eden. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Benji's gonna flank behind Eden, because Eden's going alone, okay. and Benji's gonna have that protective moment, and it's gonna be like, no, no one goes alone. Alright. Ohana means family. <laughs> um, <laughs> Alright, so Eden and Benji, you get to the north. You open the bedroom door. There is so much dust. The the sunlight is choked by it. And what you find sitting on the bed is Miss Flanagan, or at least an old teacher looking person. Okay. And she seems to be staring unblinking out the window, not moving. And in her mouth is a piece of paper. What do you do? Hmm. Uh, can I roll a mess with to see if I can get that paper out of her mouth? Absolutely. You can, you, you can totally do that. Go ahead. Um, a three again. All right. <laughs> so you creep around and you see the still figure with the paper in her mouth and you slowly reach up to get the paper and as you're slowly reaching up and grab the paper between you're almost getting it out past your front teeth about halfway there now and then at the end she clamps down with her mouth. <coughs> and you hear behind gritted teeth. <coughs> and then... Can I roll to not hear that? <laughs> <laughs> can I also, even though I'm the one supposed to be hearing this, can I also roll to not hear that, yeah. please? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, uh, and then... She tears it off. She, she tears off that piece, and she seems to fall backward into the bed, and the bed seems to be swallowing her up, like a sinkhole. Both of you take three stress because that was stressful as fuck. Let's so go ahead and mark off three stress boxes. Oh, um, question. Yeah. I had a stress from last time. Do I still have that stress? You still have that, yes. Okay. Oh my. That is a lot of stress boxes already. Yep. <laughs> it's stressful. <laughs> <laughs> but what the paper that you have in her hand, it looks like it. she just tore off a blank bit. It describes, it seems to be some kind of, well, for lack of a better word, ritual. So, uh, the words themselves don't seem to make themselves very clear. They're in either Latin or Greek, but there's something in you that wants to say the words and you're not sure why. So I'm going to let you all stew on that. We're going to go over to the South, you know, the little chamber by the bathroom with Ronnie and Thea and Carter. Carter, you you open the door. You find a mostly, mostly empty room. It's bare, covered in dust. Except, of course, near the corner, where you see an older adult female who looks a lot like Miss Flanagan. 
be in sort of suspended in the corner faced uh, facing the corner sort of Blair Witch style but weirdly suspended towards the top of the ceiling and she's holding she's holding the ceiling with her hands yeah like that yeah like that yeah she's raising the roof that's right Tori yeah uh <laughs> oh um uh, so what do you do So I don't see any, like, necklace in there around anywhere? Go ahead and roll either study or assess, all of you. Teamwork effort. Study or what? Assess. Okay. Okay, I'll so I've got two study. in study, so two dice and pick the highest, right? Yep, you got it. Four. Okay, or five. Okay. Sorry, the green screen five. ate your hand. <laughs> yeah. I've got a three. Okay. Good. I've got a five. So, at first, it's not very clear where anything is besides that figure on the ceiling. But then you notice there's something around the figure on the ceiling's, like, arm. Here, let me switch back here. Arm right here. And it seems to be a golden chain. And then attached to the ceiling is a small pendant of lapis lazuli framed in gold it looks like a necklace okay so we were told we have to find a necklace and that's a necklace mm -hmm. i guess kind of how is it how is it falling up indeed I would like to roll Shiver hey. to see if I can very quickly have a conversation with whatever insects might be in this room to um, have them assist me in deciding what the next move should be. Should I go get that? Is that what I want? Do that. <laughs> I don't like how excited you are about that. Four. I never like how excited they are. Four. Cool. You reach out with your mind again. Reality fades a little, and you're once again in that hive space. And you feel wriggling, nascent wriggling. And nearby, there's flies. Yes, these are the minds of flies, along with a few Vespa forms making nests. And they're all saying the same thing. They're coming together and saying that all you need to do is say her name and she will answer. We can help restrain her though. We're already inside. I relay this information to the other people in the room with me. <laughs> oh. they, they said, say her name. I mean, they've never led me astray. It's true. Who, does anybody know her name or do we just say Miss Flanagan? You said Miss Flanagan out loud? It, yeah. Cool. Here we go. Uh <laughs> oh, oh, no. Yes, what have done? So... The fig Wait, I thought we had the, the figure uh, then immediately bends backwards her spine in an unnatural arc and now the necklace is, da is dangling and she kind of the upside down face looks at you and goes did you enjoy the field trip and grins madly and then she starts to try and lurch forward but it looks like she's being restrained by something she can't I'm, quite get to you. Cool. I'm I'm going to I'm going to run up and and snatch the the chain off her arm. Like I'm just going to I'm going to snap pull it so that it breaks. Okay. Uh d what do you want to roll for that? I don't know. I don't I don't have a thing for that. Uh, I don't, you can always burn a stress. I got to destroy. You got burn. I've got you you have you can burn stress in order to gain dots. So if you want to do that, you can. 
Uh, what would I? What that would that be? Would that be like a, a finesse or a? Because yeah, it could be a finesse. Sure. Because I've I've got I don't know if destroy would work. Destroy would also work. Okay, I've got a, I've got one dot and destroy. Okay, do you want to burn a st uh, stress to get more than one dot? Sure, let's do it. Let let's go. Let's, All right. Let's, so let's mark mark something that. in your stress box. Just one. One stress box. Okay. Yeah. Totally gonna just. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna, be gonna fine. do it. All right. Go ahead and roll. Okay. Oh. What'd you get? Two. Okay. I got. Two. Here we go. Here we go. Wait, 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 wait. I got, but I got an extra dot so I can roll twice. Aha. I, I only roll one. Oh, okay. okay. And plus, mind. just reminds you, you can use stress to add to effect. So you can upgrade your effect as well as adding, adding your dice. Okay. So do you want to add your dice or do you want to add effect? Oh, well, what kind of effect can I have? So like, like if you get a one, or one through three, that's a pyrrhic success, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If you plus one effect, that becomes a risky success. So it's okay. no longer like a Pyrrhic, and so on and so forth. I'm I'm gonna add a dice. Okay, add a dice. And then I'm, I'm gonna roll this again. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's much better. Four. Okay, there we go. Oh god. <laughs> oh god. <clears throat> that was almost oh. real bad. <laughs> that was real life stress. <laughs> So, you, you summon up all of that energy, and you're just like, I have had it with these motherfucking things. I just wanted to go to school. And so you go, you march right up to it. It's, it's trying to grab you, but it's like being restrained by something. And you see along the hands, things... It looks almost like maggots, but it's like they're they're pushing against the arm, restraining the muscle. Oh, she's dead. Oh yeah, they said they were helping restrain. Yeah. So. Oh, okay. So you snatch the necklace from the arm, and as soon as you do so, she wildly like she like someone cut out all the keyframes, uh, basically gesticulates and shrieks and somehow gets sucked back into the corner of the room disappearing you now have the necklace she just, she just disappeared into the corner of the room yeah she's great she's gone but you do have the necklace oh hey. well also all of you add three stress to your stress boxes because that will... my special ability is Ariatic Will, so I have a D a one D resistance. Oh, for that because I'm used to weird shit. All right, go ahead and and roll that res uh, roll that one D, and it's a three. All right, uh, you uh, for you it's only two stress. Excellent, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Carter I've says. We need to get the hell out now. Yep. I'm, a, I'm, 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 let's go. Agreed. I'm, we, we've got to get, we, we, wait, we've got to find Eden and, uh, the, the little one. What's the little one's name? The little one. Benji. Ben, ben, it's Benji. Benji. And Benji. Carter's, okay. We got to find Eden and Benji. Carter starts yelling for the two of them go, heading back into the hallway. Chris, what, what do you make of all of that? Um, I kind of froze for a minute because when I started hearing voices coming from other directions, I'm like, okay, I'm going to need to draw this, this creature off. But then I heard voices from two different directions. So I had to pick one. Mm -hmm. So I was there for the necklace um, okay. incident and extremely stressed by it. Okay. So go ahead and mark down three stress. Uh, was I able to find anything that could carry a body on it? You were. Uh, you managed to find a large comforter. Uh, 
that is very musty, covered in dust, but it's it's enough to drag a body. Okay, so I'm gonna try and like manhandle that along with me. Okay, so you see, you all you see uh, Chris basically covered in comforter. <laughs> <laughs> That's a mood, though. Eden, Benji, uh, do you go out of the the room? Yeah, I want to go find the the folks we're missing. Okay. Yeah. So, as soon as this whole ghost lady deal things, I kind of like almost practically like drag Eden out of this room. Like, come on, this is not happening. Let's go. <laughs> Let's find the others. Um, okay. Did Did anybody find like the the? Okay. So 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 the the Miss Flanagan, she had the the necklace and i took it and then she disappeared into a a corner did y'all the i don't know if that was the real miss flanagan um a, or carter says thea you did an awesome job now might not be the time for this so, but we did, did ellie hear them start calling to each other from upstairs yeah okay she's gonna start leading um ass back over to the uh top of the basement stairs okay so, flashing downstairs as you all are filling each other in. You've been leading him on a wild goose chase down there. Yeah. I don't have to go very fast. He's not exactly the speediest. No, he's not. He's, he's, uh, the, the pace of his step is literally. And he's getting pretty frustrated. I'm sure he is. And so at one point... When you're going, when he's chasing you through the dining the the dining room kitchen, he decides that he is going to try projectiles. So he goes. I'm, this is a tiresome game. I think you're a tiresome git, so that's fitting. I. Will dispose. Can you? Can I see your dice? <laughs> They've been doing so well. They've been doing so well. Bye, buddies. I loved you. <laughs> I'm, I'm not cursing your dice. I'm not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's a reason you have that up so they can't see the look I just gave you. Because <laughs> I know that face. And I know my dice are fucked. <laughs> Your dice are fine. I'm just fucked. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. So, you are near the basement stairs. He rips his arm off. What the hell? He just straight up just takes it off. And it's still moving. The hand is still moving. Okay. You take five stress. Um, <laughs> I didn't know he came with that setting. <laughs> and he throw. He tries to throw the arm down. Uh, he tries to throw the arm at you. However, he's pretty cut up in the face. He can't see very well. Good. So he just ends up throwing his arm down in the basement. Good. Hey, ugly, you missed. And Tris, thanks for lending a hand. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I, I want to make it perfectly clear that never in any real life situation do I want a helping hand that is fuck mothering detached. So he he growls and he tr and he basically stumbles towards oh, you. Come on, puppy. Let's go. Come on. And he is about to reach you near the basement opening. What do you do? I am going to sort of baseball slide between his legs, kick him in the ass, and shove him downstairs. Okay. That's that's a couple of that's a complex action. That's so fine. heck this man. Okay. Uh what do you want to use for the baseball slide? Uh sneak seems somewhat relevant at least. We can do sneak. Yeah. Oh, that shit's Pyrrhic. Okay. Let's go. So, you attempt a baseball slide. I accept my death. 
beneath <laughs> beneath his legs, and he grabs you as you're sliding and prevents your inertia. What do you do next? You're being dragged, you're being grabbed by your hair. So there's a whole bunch of broken glass and stuff around, uh, as well as like knives and stuff. What's the likelihood I could just chop a bunch of my hair off? You'd have to reach it. You're on the floor right now. Hmm. Okay. Um. So the last time I did shivers, I basically basically glued pool balls to this jerk's feet. Uh, what if I roll shivers to kick him in the nats? Is that an option? <laughs> <laughs> Is that a thing I can do? Go ahead and reach out with shivers, and we'll see what happens. All right, let's do it. All shivers all the time, baby. That's six. All right. One time I don't roll shivers, it's snatched up by the creep. So you're you're being snatched up by the hair. You're struggling, and something. It's like a. It's like a quiet, very still, dust hill begins to cover you and you feel slippery and then suddenly it's almost as easy as reaching up and picking a grape off a vine a single grape i don't want his grapes what you're good what you're it feels like that but you're not you're not getting his grapes don't worry <laughs> and as you're doing that you're bringing your hand down and you notice that his chest is now bent over and somehow you've caught something in the middle of his chest. It's almost like a thread that no one can see. You're pulling him between his own legs just for a moment. You hear a snap. And suddenly you notice in the back, his clothes, there's something jutting out of his lower back. It's bloody. It looks like a vertebra. And then he collapses on the floor. Did I, did I get loose or am I just covered in 300 pounds of asshole? You are loose. Okay, I'm going to find the nearest stick-like object and poke him. He does not respond. Can I? We're like right at the top of the stairs. Can I just like nudge? Yeah, you can nudge him. Okay, I'm gonna push him slightly so he's be on the other side of the door. Then I'm gonna close the door. Okay. And if there's a lock, I'm gonna lock it, and then I'm gonna put a couple things in front of it, and then I'm gonna go find my friends. Okay. That that doesn't take you very long, and quickly you're all reunited upstairs. Oh, good. So, I might be a murderer. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so, you're all upstairs again. You've mostly filled each other in. What do you want to do? So we, we were here. We we were supposed to find. Wait, but are we certain that's the only Mrs. Flanagan? Like, it, is there another Mrs. Flanagan? I don't know that. I, uh, sorry, have we filled in? each other on everything or is this us doing that now um you can either uh we can presume that you've all filled each other in and that way you can we can kind of get going okay i don't know that either of them are real i i don't know that i don't know that real works the same way in this place so so okay so we got the we got the necklace and you have the ritual we, we have the ritual should we do this now? I... I mean, do we need to be in a certain space to do the ritual? A do certain space in the house? Here? I'm checking my notes real quick. Give me one second, please. Okay. I don't... I don't think we need to be anywhere specific, but I think... She went into a mirror, so I think... If there's... If there's a mirror in this room, we should probably pick a different one. There is no mirror... There is no mirror in the hall. Okay. Uh, There's probably one in the bathroom. Actually, the the foyer. So we can just get the hell out if anything goes wrong. Okay. I like the idea of being near the okay. door. Yeah. All right. 
So. I, I like being close to a front door. That's fine. Let's go. All right. Front doors are good. Especially when they're open. Yeah, and there's, yes. there's no, like... <laughs> like, that door is busted. Like, kicked in. Yep, it is. As you reach the... Gonna... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Are we going to bring Mrs... F um... Are we going to bring her with us, or are we going to just see if we can do it away from her? Didn't I think we need to bring her with us. Her? Didn't they both disappear? They both disappeared. There's no body. Oh, okay. Yeah. I wasn't aware of the other one existing or disappearing. Yep. Yep, they, they, bo no, they both disappeared. Us filling, or filling each other in. Yep. It's all good. All right. So, who wants to read the ritual? Well, Benji found it, right? Okay. Benji's it. The, it Benji's taking initiative. The, uh, the ritual details that you're to place the necklace on the floor and all of you in a circle around it. After you all assemble, the words just kind of flow out of your mouth. They're strange syllables. The words seem to peck at the edges of your skin with each word you feel a sharpness in the nerves all of you and then as you reach the end of the first clause suddenly everything goes dark every single thing it's just you all of you in a circle, the necklace in a floating black void. You continue. We see each other. You do. Sorry. You do see each other. Yes. And can I roll a. Uh, go ahead. Oh, can I roll a shiver to like feel like feel if there's like anything else there? As you continue the ritual, I'm mean, just. You don't even have to roll. Okay. You can detect. That there is something else there. You feel that similar presence as you did in the basement. Except louder. Angrier. And suddenly, in the blink of an eye, you're in the middle of a desert. In the sky, there are two moons. You see Sawaro, Creosote, and other desert plants, and in front of you is a burning bush. Behind the burning bush, erupting out of the sand, it looks like ruins, just a partial piece of a wall, L-shaped. It doesn't connect to anything yet, but there are th these L-shaped walls keep popping out of the sand. And then, in front of the bush, you have suddenly appearing the woman, Sylvie Rhodes, holding a handful of dust and spreading it on the desert floor. Do you want to know the geometry of truth? What do you do? Pee a little. Pee a little. <laughs> <laughs> I'm real bad at math, so so I'm probably not the one you want for this. Can we roll to read terms and conditions? <laughs> <laughs> What's the TOS? Does the paper say yeah. about this? And Ellie's gonna roll shivers. So you look back at the ritual, Benji. And it says the answer to the question is I know the axiomatic iteration. Shivers? Yeah. You feel an overwhelming urge to get the hell out as soon as possible. You are in severe danger. And you know 
that the quickest way out is to take care of Sylvie, which means they need to complete the ritual. Okay. We have to finish it. Her face, an eye goes up to her forehead. Her mouth is now on the side of her, uh, uh, the side of her cheek. What do you do? I'm gonna say out loud, I know the axiomatic iteration. She... That feels like a bad idea. <laughs> she, uh, she nods. And she opens up her chest to reveal a horrendous light as if it were sick like a fluorescent spotlight and out of it she pulls something and she goes thank you for taking on the burden oh no <laughs> And she hands you, Benji, what looks like a black and abalone decorated tarot card. It is blank on one side. Do you take it? Oh no. <laughs> Can I roll a shippers to see if this taking this would be good, good or bad? You can try. You need shippers to tell you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> I'm taking all the shivers I can take. Okay. That shivers was a natural one. This is the best idea you've ever had to take that card. Oh, <laughs> no. Right. I'm not gonna take this card. You got I do me. not trust That's myself. A <laughs> it's a, I'm not gonna make you do something you don't want to do, though, so... I'm gonna be real hesitant about it because of my shivers, but I'm not gonna take the card because I do not trust this ghost lady that I captured in a mirror. Okay. She places the card gently on the ground. And she goes... If you want peace, claim your tide. I'm rolling shivers to see if this is something I should do. Okay, go ahead. Six. This is something that will hurt a lot, but it is the only way to stop her. I snatch the card. Okay. Instantly. Desert's gone. The moons are gone. All of it's gone. I loved you, Ronnie. <laughs> I enjoyed your goldfish. <laughs> and hold it. You're holding in your hand, Ronnie. Something. And you might need to be on stream in order to, to really hear this. So I'm going to give you a moment. You see a blank tarot card. It has gorgeous inlays on the back. Gold, abalone, pearl just in this paper-thin sort of illumination, swirling around what looks to be forming a labyrinth. On the other side, it's just black for right now. But the more you stare at it, the more something begins to appear. And as you do so, eventually this... I am locked in. This reveals itself, and all of you can see it, not just Ronnie. You see a name at the bottom of the card. It says you're in tide. You get an overwhelming sense of loneliness, but a delight in it. Like finally you know the truth. Finally you know everything that they haven't been saying. And you know finally that you can, if 
you just get more, you'll be able to wield it and change it. Your mind is flooded with all sorts of memories where you felt isolated and you have this f giddy feeling like you could change it, change the past, change yourself. And then suddenly, it's gone. The image is gone, and the card goes back to sleep. In front of you, in the foyer, is a very confused-looking older woman. I don't... Are you all in my class? Hi, Miss Lanigan. Ellie! I thought we were, we went on the field trip. Did I, did I, I must have passed out on the bus. I'm, I'm really confused. Um, uh, yeah, let's all, let's all head back to school. Yeah, that's. We'll, we'll walk you back. We're, it's, it's, we're not in your class today, but, um, yeah, let's walk you back to the school. You do so without incident. Is there anything you want to do before we move on to the next phase? I'm going to check in with Ronnie. And yeah. Make sure she's okay because she picked up the cursed card and she was staring at it for a real long time, not saying anything. The artwork was yeah. so pretty. It was really neat. Like, I just felt like everything could change and everything could get better and it won't. I don't. I don't know how to describe it. Like, I. But we're back and we're here, right? And and we've got Miss Flan again, and so we're gonna take her back to school. So like everything's cool. Um. Well, what time is it right now? It is approximately four forty-five p.m. I gotta go home though before my mom starts to worry. Um. So so I'm just gonna tuck this in my in my pocket. And uh, are you sure you want to keep that, Ronnie? Yeah, maybe I mean, we should maybe put that with the cards. We should just, yeah, we put it with all the other stuff so that you know we can all look at it together. Ellie takes out. Okay. Um, Sorry. Ellie takes yeah, out. Yeah, we can do that. One in case Ronnie wants to put it there. Yeah, I can tuck it into the notebook so nobody else has to touch it. Ellie, how? How do you put the card in the notebook? Allie's just holding the notebook open. Okay, so not making physical contact with the card? Absolutely not. Good, all right, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else want to make any actions? Uh, just to... Clarify, because my memory is really bad. Do, do does Benji live by Ronnie? If anyone can remember, because oh, Benji lives in Willow's Testament. Ah, uh, do, do I live nearby, Ronnie? Ronnie, do you remember uh, where you live? Aren't we really near Willow? I wrote it down. I know you're in the old part of town. Yeah. I live in Hawkins Approach. Okay. So it's about... You. Um, here, let me, let me bring up the, the map again. That way y'all can see. That is not the map. <laughs> that, is, that is the other map. Okay, here we go. Cool. And then I'm just going to do a window capture because it's going to be the easiest. Da, 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 da. There we go. So Hawkins Approach, and there's Willow's Testament. I live in Hawkins Approach as well, so I can walk with Ronnie. Okay. Well, thanks so much. Benji. Yeah, Benji's going to also just walk with Ronnie to okay. Hawkins and pro Approach just because he just... He just really wants to make sure Ronnie's okay because she took the card when he could have. Right. I get that. Yeah. I mean, my mom probably has snacks. Do you guys want some snacks when we get there? 
Yeah, snacks sound nice. Yeah. Okay. Much better than creepy ghost ladies. Right. All right. Any other actions? Ellie would like to have a word with Crosby, but that doesn't have to happen today. That'll happen. That'll happen next time. He's getting straight cussed the um, fuck out. Chris. I want to just comfort her and comfort her and uh, clean myself up as to the best of my ability. Okay. You do. You do so. Do you do you still offer the comforter to Miss Flanagan? Is she like standing? She's standing. Yeah, no, I think I'm good. Okay. <laughs> Any other actions? Uh, yeah. So, 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 Carter, you you doing all right, bro? Yeah, I mean, we've all been in like haunted houses. We've all done the Halloween tours. I'm less okay with the fact that somebody clearly must have drugged us, or uh, I don't know. Should, there's mold should in the take house. Miss Flanagan back. No, this is this is after you've taken Miss Flanagan back, so you're good. Oh, okay. Yeah. There was the thing about the blank. Okay, sorry. Okay. There's not an adult over hearing. I yep. apologize for interrupting. You're good. No, uh, I. So it, we didn't eat anything. And 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 I had my nose covered. The entire time we were in that gross kitchen. So I had drugs. I, yeah. We weren't we weren't drug Carter. That was Car Carter's face gets like really like it's probably the most emotion you've seen and you can't tell if he's like sad or angry or scared. And he said there's an explanation for it. Nothing happened, and I'm gonna find it. And then he turns and starts walking away from the group. <laughs> that was a whole lot of nothing. <laughs> like that nothing spent hours and 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 smelled like dead. But okay, that nothing. Yeah. Oh. Um. Yes. Ellie would like to see if there's a corpse. A corpse of oh. The guy she murdered. <laughs> you didn't murder him. Can't He's murder one alive. Dead. She's eleven. Yeah. There. Um. Let's say that you return there shortly thereafter, after things are settled down. You don't see anything. There's no body. Is the kitchen back to normal? The kitchen is back to normal. And his arm's Wait, not did... creeping around or anything? Just like he was never there at all? Like he was never there at all. Okay. All right. I feel great about that. Mm-hmm. So. Any other actions? Are we good? I'm going. I'm. I'm going home. Okay. And and, and I don't. I don't. I'm. I don't know if I can tell my mom about this. Probably not. But the good news is, you uh your click earned two reputation. Ta-da! Yay! Yep. And you also earned. Mrs. Flanagan's Mrs. Flanagan owes you a favor. Oh, so she's not gonna narc? No. Heck yeah, blackmail. Okay. Blackmail. I thought it was just gonna be a friendly favor. <laughs> <laughs> that escalated quickly. That man threw a whole arm at me, okay? <laughs> a whole arm from murder. It was with really blackmail. Hard. I'm like do as thou must, damn it. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say the amount of trouble the click earned is two, which is fine. Nothing, nothing too serious. So two, so two reputation and two trouble. Yep. Okay. Okay. And now... Let's see. Ange. Does I, does I exist? Hello? Hello. Could you get, can you roll for me a 1d6? I 
I could, but my see, my mom says I have to go home. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay. I got a, I got a six. Okay. That better, be, better be good. <laughs> if do you, I'm not going to tell you the result yet. Do you want to add an optional second die? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, because that, that, yeah, yeah, that feels, wait, wait, hold on, hold on, um, what, what's, what, what's the catch, so does it, does it, does it, does it, does it one, one, one or overwrite the first one? It adds. Okay, 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 okay. then we'll do that. That's, that's a five. Okay, so eleven. Nice, 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 I like them. <laughs> All right, so the entanglement that the click in uh, click incurs is number 11. New eyes watch you. <laughs> Some kind of spirit force or creature has now taken notice of the click and will begin to investigate. This can be dealt with via story means, through negotiating with it somehow, or by getting help from certain NPCs. And we'll find out more about that entanglement next time. We'll start with the venting phase from this one. Uh, so that way you guys can sort of regroup and heal and things like that. Um, and we'll also do some other. Let's see. Oh, uh, you should have your experience triggers um, on your character sheet. Go ahead and sort of do a little self reflect. If you need to watch the VODs, go ahead and. Uh, Basically, uh, every time you um, rolled uh, an attribute, you mark one XP. Um, if you did, if you did something a lot, you mark two XP. I, I didn't explain that well. Let me say that again. Basically, if you did something a lot, that's an XP trigger. You get two XP. If you did something once, you did. You get one XP. There we go. And you don't have to. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry, oh, sorry. That, no, that mark, we mark the boxes above the action or, or um one. Where, where, does, where do we mark? We mark that. Where do you mark that? There should be a thing. Let me look at the character sheets again. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. There you are. Okay. Uh, it's done by category on the character sheet. It looks like. Uh, so if you rolled. Track, study, assess, or mess with, mark recognition. Yep. Uh, shiver, order, suck up, and convince are fluency. Yep. And finesse, sneak, beat up, and destroy are streetwise. Yep. Okay, that's okay, where I would have put it. That's what I was up to. Mark the back of the boat. Yep, and if you, and as far as like, uh, your personal stuff like overcame a challenge with intuition vibes or supernatural power for creepy kid you would uh put that in uh wherever shiver was right because shiver corresponds to like the supernatural stuff uh fluency or sorry uh fluency yeah yeah go ahead okay. Okay. so yeah uh do we get any stress reduction uh that's going to be next session that's going to be inventing okay because we're out of time and i don't want to abuse people's schedules Legit. All right. Ta-da! Reaction does not stress. Stress. That's just. That's just. I'm sorry. When you roll, when you roll it says every time you roll a desperate action, action mark an XP. Is yep. that is taking that a stress, stress or? or? Uh, a desperate action means you have desperate position, and that was okay, your okay. your first encounter was desperate position. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so I get to I get mark the XP for that. For that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'll be you do. So, how's everyone feeling? Checking in. How how is everyone doing? Oh god, oh god. Oh god. just got more complicated. Got more complicated. <laughs> it sure did. It sure did. I think my heart started pounding from Ghibli Ghost Lady. Oh yeah, she's great. That that was that was so much. That was that was. Like, like, I'm, 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 I'm glad that, that we released Sylvie, um, um, but, but also, what the hell, did, did we just curse Ronnie? 
Ronnie. I said, Ronnie, don't touch it. And guess what they did? Touched it. Well, it's because, like, I felt like it was the thing that had to be done. It had to be done. It did. I should have just said, just follow the lead. Did you have to touch it with your hand? The ritual had to be completed. Otherwise, I suspect we would have been stuck there. You would have. Oh, I hate that for us. Mm hmm. So, uh, Chunkus, how you doing? Doing awesome. That was fantastic, and I'm looking forward to getting into even more trouble. Yay, more trouble. All right. Well, thank you, everyone in chat. Thank you, everyone here. If you want, if you have thoughts uh, that occur to you about how things are run, please feel free. Um, I'll be making a feedback uh, sheet for session two. Uh, and posting it on the Discord so you can leave anonymized fees ba fee fees back. <laughs> feedback. Um, donuts. Yeah, with the donuts. Yeah, the donut adults. Um, and yeah. So thank you, Karita Crafty MB. Thank you, Num Dinosaur D3. Thank you, PJC Plays. Thank you, 2% Chungus. Thank you, Mothy Time. And thank you, Skeelzy. And thank you, Miss Tori J. All of you are wonderful. Thank you. And I shall see you all on the other side. Take care, y'all. Yeah.